Welcome to The Read Along. A mini book club for your ears. I'm your host, Scott. I'm your other host, Anita. And join us on a journey through a good book, one one chapter chapter at a time. time. Do you like talking about movies? Do you like talking about mediocre movies? Do you like talking about how you could have fixed mediocre movies? Well, I certainly do, and you can listen to me, Scott C. Bourgeois, along with my co-hosts Greg Beaver and Liam Kreswick, as we give our notes, and I have some notes. You can follow it now on your podcatcher of choice, or support it by visiting patreon.com slash I have some notes. Took a couple days off. As you do. Yeah. I hadn't taken any significant time off in a while for myself. Well, and you still haven't. Taking an extra long weekend is not a significant amount of time No, off. but it gave me two days to kind of put up my feet and, like, the kids are out and you're at work and just have some me time. Yeah, a little decompression. Because sometimes you need to recharge the batteries and you can't look out for the people you care about if you're not also caring for yourself. It's true. So it was a little little me day me couple of days <laughs> you had a me friday and now you're having a me monday at the time of recording at time of recording monday yeah. um <laughs> scott's having another me day a little gamecation if you will yeah playing some catching up on some video games putting my feet up maybe having a nap later who knows uh, luxury so nice nita occasionally takes a, a day for herself here and there too yeah it's healthy i think agreed basically where i'm going with this is Take a little time for yourself. Don't be afraid to do it. Yeah, it's even okay. If, even if you've got kids or a spouse, sometimes you need a little you time to recharge and uh, be ready to face the rest of your week or your month or whatever's coming up. Yeah, I hope this does you good. And a great thing to do while you're having that me time, read a book. <laughs> yes, 100%. Which both Anita and I did a chapter of so that we can discuss it now. Short little preamble. This will actually probably be a short little episode because it wasn't a super long chapter, but I feel like there was some important potentially information that was dropped and and we're definitely going to have some stuff to chew over. Oh, for sure. But before we get to that, a brief recap of our previous chapter in which the queen totally bought Rosie's lie to Sir Simon that uh, she had to rush off on some family emergency for the day. Meantime, Rosie was not doing that. She was questioning some of the people who were at the dine and sleep. Yeah. Most importantly, one Meredith Gostolo, who it turns out is in fact an architect, not an actress. Yes. And who gave some very important information about what she was doing that night, which was having a tryst with Brodsky, but probably not also murdering him. Probably not. And that leads us into chapter 10 of The Winds Are Not by S.J. Bennett. So the queen is still kind of hung up on the fact that Rosie's having her own me day, actually. Okay. The queen doesn't know that it's not a me day for Rosie. And it wouldn't be a me day anyway, because it was a family emergency lie that she gave. Yeah. And the queen is kind of like hung up on that. Like, well, I hope she makes it back tonight, like Sir Simon said. And then maybe I'll be able to get her to go question some of the people tomorrow. And this is what's on her mind. Well, she's supposed to be like in a privy council meeting. She's supposed to be queening. Yeah. (laughs) She's busy queening and can't do any of the investigating and yeah. doesn't know that Rosie's out doing the investigating. Yeah. I think Her Majesty is going to be pleasantly surprised when Rosie gets back. It is my hope that it's a good character connection for the two of them. Yeah. That the queen will be like, oh, oh, you're actually very efficient. Excellent. <laughs> we also get a name drop here uh, for Billy McLaughlin, who might come back into the story, which is why I want to like put a little pin in that. Yes. Um, apparently he's someone who used to be on the Queen's protection team and would occasionally help her assistant private secretaries with their investigating because he was discreet and good at it. And she was like, well, if Rosie's too busy, maybe I'll maybe I'll see if he might be able to help out. Apparently he's retired now, but she's like, he's probably bored, right? <laughs> like he liked the investigating. Maybe I should ask him to help out. He might turn up. Yeah. And I mean, the Queen is bored anyway because they're just talking about her birthday celebration. And that is... Fine, whatever, but she's more interested in trying to solve the mystery. 
I think it's so sweet that what she actually wants for her birthday and what protocol demands for her birthday are two very different things. Yeah, she's even like, I wouldn't mind like a visit from the great grandkids and just like a quiet afternoon. Right? That's that's all she wants. Maybe a nice ride out in the country. Yeah. And, but, but they're like, no, we have to have parades and state dinners. State celebration, and- yeah. <laughs> but what Rosie is in fact doing is investigating, and she has another meeting with another one of our prime suspects at a coffee shop where she meets up with Masha. Yes. Masha shows up incognito. I am using all of the air uh, quotes. Yes. He's air quoting very hard. Because she's clearly dressed down, but there's no hiding who she is. But she's so bad at it. Yeah. Yeah. And moreover, she comes in with like two giant Russian bodyguards. Large, scary bodyguard men. Who seat themselves like a discreet distance away. And she says, okay, so here's the deal. I've told Yuri that a blogger wants to interview me, and that's what we're here to do. I've got like 30 minutes, and then I need to be back. So we need to make this quick. And Rosie's like... Cool beans. So here's what I know. (laughs) You were cahooting with Brodsky. You got him up to Meredith's room. And then you called him later because you wanted a booty call with him too. And Masha is like, okay, no. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, and then no. She almost comes across the table at her. She might have if she hadn't been so much of a lady. But she's like, okay, so here's the situation. Brodsky came up to me and said, hey, I want to have a hookup with Meredith. Can you make that happen? And Masha was like, Yes, because I'm friends with him. He teaches me piano and only teaches me piano. Yes. Like, I don't get five seconds without Yuri's security goons watching my every move. He is ultra paranoid about me. Maxim Brodsky and I don't spend time alone together ever. So there's no way I could be doing anything with him. But I did arrange for him to go have this hookup. And the way I did it was pretty simple. I basically just had him dress up as Yuri's manservant. Yeah. Uh, I think it's pronounced Vadim. Or Vadim. Or Vadim. I'm not sure. Either way, like, the castle staff don't really know what Vadim looks like necessarily. So it's easy enough for a guy in a suit to pass himself off as a manservant. Servants fade into the background. Yeah. I believe she says outright, one Russian servant looks like another. Yeah, right? so he basically put on a suit, the kind of which Vadim might wear. She gave him a bottle of champagne and a flimsy excuse to bring it to her. And he just went up to see Meredith instead. Yeah. And then she does say, I was the one who texted him. Not because I was trying to hook up with him after, but because we knew that the ruse would fall apart when Yuri came back and asked for Vadim. Yes, the real Vadim. So when he turned back up, I texted him to let him know he needed to beat it because yeah. Yuri was back. And that was the text that Brodsky got where he was like, I've got to go. Yeah, it's not that she wanted Maxim to come to her. It's that the ruse was about to be up. Yeah. Right? And he needed to get out of there before he got in trouble. So we learn a couple timeline events here. Number one, Brodsky being caught in a part of the castle he shouldn't have been in probably did happen after his meeting with Meredith. Yes. And we can assume that because Rosie actually was using that knowledge to kind of like fish here. Like she accuses Masha of trying to hook up with Brodsky as well because she's working off the information that he was somewhere he wasn't supposed to be. Right. And she gets information, just not the information she thought she might get. Number two, Yuri was off with... Jay, his friend. Hedge fund guy, yeah, Jay Hacks. And they were getting drunk. Yes. And we know that that tracks because Yuri was very hungover the next morning. Yes. He had his special hangover drink made for him. (laughs) So when he came back, it was quite late and he was like fall down drunk. He apparently tried to have a little sexy time with Masha, but it didn't really pan out. Something went sour because she she let him try and seduce her. And then he looked at her with disgust and turned away and left. Well, he didn't even leave. He called for Vadim. Because he was so drunk that he needed help getting in bed. And then he fell asleep next to her. And she's like, he was there all night, snoring loudly. So I can account for Yuri probably not being the murderer. But Rosie does think to herself, he's a powerful rich man. If he'd wanted someone dead, he didn't need to be the one to do it himself. Yeah, exactly. I I think Rosie's got it exactly right. Maybe he didn't do it himself. Maybe he spearheaded it, though. Yeah. Right? So we can account for Masha and Yuri's probable uh, location that evening. We can account for who texted Brodsky to get him out of Meredith's room. Yep. But we still are missing a bunch of information. 
We still don't know who killed Brodsky or why. But I'm going to posit something. And there's very scant evidence for this at the moment. Mm -hmm. What if Brodsky wasn't the target? What if Vadim was the target? If Brodsky was dressed up as Vadim and passing himself off as Vadim, it's possible that he was accidentally attacked. Yeah, it's true. When it was, in fact, Yuri's servant who was the target. Yeah. That does mean that our assassin hasn't done their homework. Yeah. But I As mean, in not knowing what he looked like, right? But Masha does say one Russian servant looks like another Russian servant. Agreed. Right? But when you've hired an assassin to kill a specific person, you want your assassin to kill the correct specific person. Unless it wasn't necessarily a hired hit and it was very sloppily done. Well, and we know that it kind of was. Yeah. Right? So, and, and I'm not saying that this is necessarily the case because we don't know who would target Vadim or why. I'm just saying that it's not outside the realm of possibility that Brodsky was attacked by mistake because someone mistook him for Vadim. Yeah. The only thing we know about Vadim is that he was staying in quarters near Brodsky. Yes. So if somebody had followed Brodsky up, another reason why he might have accidentally been mistaken for Vadim. Right. And number two, he's gay, or at least is claiming to be gay. He's one of the few people who Masha is trusted in the presence of (laughs) without security because... The assumption is because he's gay, nothing's going to happen. Yeah. So, and this is going entirely on what Masha is saying. Yes. But even if we hear it from Masha instead of Yuri, that does track with me based on the brief time that we were in Yuri's head and how obviously he feels about his wife. Yeah. And our evidence based on other things that people have seen, like corroborating evidence, right? Yeah. What happened at breakfast, what happened after breakfast in the car, right? Yeah. Even if it's coming from Masha's point of view, it does track. Yuri's not great. No. As a person. Uh, it's not Yuri who I'm curious about, though, here. It's Vadim. Yeah, we're going We're going off of Masha's word only that Vadim is gay. Yes. Just saying. Another interesting thing that jumped out, and you brought this up as well, Rosie is kind of impressed in spite of herself, at how effectively Masha was on the spot able to circumvent all of the castle security. Yeah, I was thinking that out last night, and I was talking to you about it before we went on microphone. How how quickly she came up with a plan to get around security for Maxim to, to go be with Meredith. And I think she's right. I think I know why, though, because security isn't necessarily there for everybody else. Security cares mostly about protecting the queen. Well, and the castle. Yeah, and the guests. Yeah. There's there's an so order of priority. No, like, there was no malice happening. No one was trying to steal anything. No one was going after Her Majesty. The actual crime being committed is that an employee, even if temporary, mm-hmm. was, you know, canoodling with a guest. Oh, <gasps> scandal. <laughs> it's It might not be right, but it's not criminal. The death, however, that's... That's, That's criminal. the criminal part, but we're not there yet. Here's here's the thing that jumped out at me about that, though. Mm. How quickly and effectively Masha was able to come up with a plan to circumvent a security detail. Right. And that implies to me that this is something that she has done before. Oh, probably. And as someone who's constantly being observed by security... She knows how to get around it. Fill in the blank. Yeah. That implies to me that she has ducked Yuri's security before. And... My guess is that she's ducked his security more than once. Probably. Yeah. So I'm just putting that out there. We have Masha's word that she was in bed with an unconscious Yuri that night. Yes. And we know that she's good at ducking security. So can we completely (laughs) rule her out? I don't know that we can. I agree with you. Based on the evidence we have so far. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't know that she killed him. I don't don't, think that she did. I don't know that either, but I'm not saying that she's out of play. I don't completely believe her story. I think she might be hiding something. I think something else might have gone on that evening. Because she's very defensive to Rosie as well. She was just being accused again of having an affair with Brodsky. She is adamant that she has not. She gets it constantly. Well, I shouldn't say constantly, but she gets it from her husband. And now she's getting it from Rosie? I would be defensive too. Fair enough. And I'm not saying she was necessarily having any sort of tryst with Brodsky that night. I'm just saying that we can't 100% say that she was where she says she was. Which is is fine. I don't believe that she was having an affair or killed him that night. 
I'm not. I'm, I just, and I'm. I'm not going into the accusing parlor. I'm not <laughs> accusing her of killing him. No, I know. I'm just saying that her story adds up right now. But you think there's details missing? I think there's details missing, which is perfectly fair. And we don't have anybody to corroborate her whereabouts if Yuri was unconscious in bed. Agreed. So just putting that out there. One more thing I want to bring up. It's a question I can't answer. Mm -hmm. If Maxim wasn't the target and Vadim was, why? Yeah, I I even said before, we don't know a motive for why that might be. Yeah, I don't have a good reason at all. I can't even make one up. I got nothing. We just don't know enough about Vadim to make that distinction. I'm just saying that it's within the realm of possibility. And part of the reason for that is... Because of how she words it, one Russian servant looks like another Russian servant. It is possible that Maxim and Vadim were mistaken for one another. Yes. By someone who meant harm to Vadim. But we we just don't know enough about him to make that claim right now. Agreed. I just, I just wanted to put that out there. That is a possibility. Yes, yeah. I know. And when you did that, it started rattling around in my brain. And I could not come up with any motive at all. So there's clearly... Information missing. Yeah. If that is the case. But as with any good detective story, we get drip fed information. There are clues that in hindsight seem obvious that we just don't have the context for earlier on. Yeah. And we're still, it's still early days. Mm -hmm. We've got plenty of book left. I know. There's so much book left. I am excited to see what happens next when the Queen and Rosie get back together. So the Queen can actually maybe start making some connections that Rosie's not. Yeah. Yeah. Because Rosie's not the one who's necessarily going to solve the mystery. The queen is. Of Rosie's course. just collecting the, the information. She's getting the puzzle pieces. The queen's going to put it together. Yes. I think it's delightful. Indeed. Also, can we just take a brief moment to acknowledge how bonkers it is that Yuri wants to go to space? <laughs> yeah, I forgot about the space thing. Oh, my lord. Apparently, he and Jay Hacks were talking about his space plans. Oh, he's paid like $10 million because he wants to go into space. Yeah, it's a billionaire prestige thing it's just so hum- just humorously bonkers yeah he has space plans so there you go <laughs> anyway anyway uh i think we'll we'll wrap it up there for today nita's giving me the nod of i have no more information that Correct. i wish to discuss so that's where we'll end it you'll want to read up on chapter 11 in time for next week uh in the meantime of course as always go and give us a little rating and a review wherever you happen to be downloading our podcast gives us a little boost helps us out. We appreciate it. Yeah, you can also reach out to us on social media. Yeah, we are on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Goodreads. Scott's very good at checking them. I am not. We are at the read along on most of those, though, so you can find us. Yeah, you can also send us an email. Absolutely. We are the read along at gmail.com. And with that said, as always, we love you very much, and we'll see you next time. Billionaires in space. Thank you for joining us on The Read Along with your hosts, Anita and Scott Bourgeois. All Read Along music is by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. Cover art is by Aaron Beaver. Be sure to join us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at The Read Along, and check out our group on Goodreads.com. Thank you.